Hello, beloved. It is usually later than I usually hop on, but I um, am coming on live. I am going on a little walk. I felt led to go for a walk tonight just around my neighborhood and just spend some time uh, with the Lord. Today was an awesome day um, at the Praise, at, no, I almost said Praise of the Park, Blessed by the Bay with Dave Pettigrew and just an awesome time in fellowship. And, you know, it was just a, a great day overall with the Lord and uh, just seeing God's kingdom come in Summer's Point was such a blessing. And um, yeah, I was just spending some time in prayer and just walking. I know it's late, but I'm just hoping that people will watch this after it's posted um, so that it's 11, it's 1052 right now where I'm doing this. But, um, you know, I was just praying and I felt like something kept coming to my heart. And so I wanted to share this um, on on the Facebook for you guys just to, I believe it, it benefited me and I believe that it's touched my heart and it will touch your heart as well. So let me just pray and then I'll share a little bit of the word of God with you. So Father, I thank you for who, who you are. I thank you for um, the revelation that you give us in your word. I thank you that you're always teaching us new things, Lord. If we just stay connected to you, we will learn to hear what you want to say to us, God. I thank you that your word never returns empty. I thank you that you love us, you died for us, Jesus, you give us eternal life. But not only do you give us eternal life, you give us abundant life in that knowing of you every day we get to walk with you. So I pray in Jesus' name you'd make these things a reality for your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I felt like the Lord was asking me a question and he was saying, Jesse, what are you sowing into? What are you sowing into? And I, I just want to ask that question to you as well. What are you sowing into? into because every one of us is sowing something in our lives and the bible says in galatians 6 1 and we actually talked about this during the morning meditation on my dad's facebook account this morning as we were in romans chapter 8 it talks about living by the flesh or living by the spirit those are the only two ways to live and to live by the flesh is to set the mind on the flesh and we talked about in the video that the flesh represents the selfishness but the spirit represents the eternal things and another passage is hitting me in my heart right now and it's galatians and this is what i wanted to share this is galatians chapter six so i don't have my bible on me so i might not quote it 100 percent accurate but i know the general idea of it so uh read galatians six when you get a chance and you will see uh these verses and you'll understand uh what i'm speaking so it says in galatians six it says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that also will he reap. For the one who sows to the flesh will reap corruption. But the one who sows to the spirit will reap eternal life. And then it says, let us not grow weary in doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It's so good because the Bible is making it clear that we are to sow into the spirit and not into the flesh. Because if you sow into the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. But if you sow into the spirit, you're going to reap eternal life. And I wanted to kind of talk about what does that really mean? So sowing, we know the parable of the sower in Mark chapter 4. It talks about the seeds. The sower goes out and sows seeds. A sower is a scatterer, right? So the Bible says that a sower is going out and scattering seeds and some land in different places. Some land on good soil and they bear fruit. Some land on stony ground and Satan takes away that word. Some land on thorny ground where it grows up a little bit, but the thorns choke it out. Some land on rocky ground where they grow up a little bit, but when persecution comes, believers fall away. And so there's different soils, but the sowing... When it talks about the sower sowing seed, it means that the sower is releasing the seed across. He's scattering seed. Sowing is another word for investing. Sowing is another word for where you're putting your time and your energy. So sowing, you can say sowing, and if you want to comment this in the chat for those listening, sowing equals where you put your time and energy. Comment that in the chat. Sowing equals time plus energy. Okay, that's the kingdom principle. 
of sewing. Sewing equals time plus energy, where you're putting your attention. And so take that to Galatians 6. It says the one who sows, the one whose time and energy goes to the flesh, that person's going to reap corruption. That person is sowing into something that only will lead to death. Jesus said it this way in Matthew chapter 6. He said, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy. No, no, no. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy and no thief can break in or steal. And where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Jesus encouraged us to store up these treasures in heaven, to store up this foundation that we can receive back in the kingdom. Okay, that's what Jesus told us to do. And so Galatians 6 is the same thing. It says, if you sow to the flesh, you're sowing to something that's meaningless, right? How many of us, if we had $100,000, would throw that in the trash can, right? That is a dumb thing to do, right? At least use it for something, right? At least use it to help somebody. If you have that money, no one would throw $100,000 in a trash can. If I saw this trash can here and said, ah, I don't need it, I throw it away. That's a dumb use of money. That is foolish to do. Totally foolish to throw $100,000 in a trash can. But God says, if you sow to the flesh, that is as foolish as throwing $100,000 into a trash can because it's just, it's, it's, it's meaningless. It's, it leads to corruption. So God tells us in Galatians 6, he says, the one who sows to the spirit will reap eternal life. And then it encourages us, he encourages us, Paul encourages us in Galatians 6 to not grow weary in doing good because in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So the temptation that every believer faces is to grow weary in doing good. Why? Because God has ordained it and set this principle that is a reality. When you sow to the spirit, you don't always see the results. That's why people give up. That's why people stop sowing into um, the spirit because the results, sometimes they take longer than sowing into the flesh. Sowing into the flesh, you kind of get the instant result, right? If I sow into the flesh that's doing something selfishly, sin, here's the trick of the enemy. Sin gives you an instant result of a high. Sin gives you an instant high of pleasure. Okay, the Bible actually calls sin pleasurable. In Hebrews 11, it says that Moses forsook the pleasures of sin for a, to, to find Christ. Hebrews 11 says pleasures of sin. Sin is pleasurable, but only for a moment. It's like, it's like sugar. Sin is like sugar. You take a hit of, you take in sugar, you get the sugar high right away. But guess what? It's not healthy for you. It's not good for you. And if all you eat is sugar, that is really bad for you. So sin works in the principle of pleasure, but it doesn't last. That's why there's drug addiction, right? That's a sin because people are getting that hit of dopamine but that is not lasting pleasure. It's a false form of the pleasure. That's why people are tempted to sow into the flesh, to sow into the selfishness, to sow into sin, to sow into meaningless things because they get a pleasure, but at the end of the day, it doesn't satisfy. That's why Ecclesiastes, Solomon was able to say, all is vanity and meaningless. It doesn't last. And he tried every pleasure. He was the richest man alive and silver in his day was like, rocks that's how common silver was that's how rich solomon was and so he he realized solomon realized that sowing into the flesh is vanity and so when you sow into the spirit when you do spiritual things you don't always see the fruit right away you don't always see the fruit of right away that's why it takes patience that's why galatians 6 says don't grow weary don't grow weary because in due season you will reap Guys, so many believers, I've talked to them, and I've been there myself. Man, I just don't, I'm discouraged with my Bible reading because I'm not feeling anything. I feel like I'm not getting anything out of it. And then what happens is people quit. People quit because they're not feeling anything. But what God is doing when he's allowing you to not feel anything, he's actually testing you, and he's actually saying, will you persevere? Because the Bible says if you sow into the Spirit, you will reap 
Guys, when you sow into spiritual things, the Bible says you will reap. Not you might reap, you will reap. So if you sow into spending time with God, you might not feel the results right away, but eventually those results will come. Jesus actually says there's a reward for seeking God. Jesus said, when you pray, go into the closet and shut the door and your father who sees in secret will reward you, will reward you openly. And Jesus says, when you fast, fast in secret and your father will reward you. When you give, give in secret and your father will reward you. There's a promise from God that there's a reward for seeking him. Hebrews 11 says God is a rewarder, Hebrews 11, 6, of those who diligently seek him. Okay, but it takes faith because we don't get the reward right away. We don't often see the reward right away. And the reward ultimately is God himself. The reward is God's presence over everything. There's other rewards, but that's the main reward. So what does sowing into the spirit mean? What does this look like practically? Sowing into the spirit is putting your time and your energy into spiritual things. The things of the kingdom, the things of God, the things that have eternal value instead of temporary value. Jesus said, Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added. Basically what Jesus was saying is sow all of your energy, sow, sow everything first into the kingdom and everything else will fall into place. So how do we sow into the kingdom? Number one, point number one, you have to sow into your relationship with God. You have to put your time and your energy into building your own relationship with God. Guys, a relationship with God takes effort. Okay, no one snaps their fingers and automatically gets close to God. It takes diligence, right? It takes effort. Just like if you want to have a really close friendship with someone, right? There's, there's that connection that sometimes you have with someone right away and it doesn't take much time. But if you really want a long lasting, consistent, close friendship, you're going to have to hang out with that person every day, or you're going to have to text them. You're going to have to meet up. You're going to have to plan your time. You're going to have to say, man, I'm going to make sure I'm going to meet up with you, man. I'm going to give you updates on my life because that's how you walk close together. You stay step by, you stay step by step. Can two walk together if they're going down on different paths? Can two walk together if they're not in accord? That's what Amos 3.3 3 says. So, guys, I think it's Amos 3.3. 3. I forget, actually. It's Amos 3 something. But, so sowing, sowing into the, the Spirit is sowing into your relationship with God. That's the Bible reading. That's prayer. You're sowing into prayer. Prayer is an investment, Right? Prayer is, is a sacrifice at times. Prayer is something that our flesh hates to do. That's why sometimes it's so hard to pray. I, I, you know, a lot of believers, you know, including myself, you know, we say, oh man, I, it's so hard to pray. It's so hard to focus. Why do you think it's so hard to focus? Because Satan is attacking you so hard on that because Satan hates when you want to pray and your flesh hates prayer. But you have to fight through that and say, I'm going to talk to God even when I don't feel like it. Amen. Sowing into the spirit, sowing into your relationship with God. Now, here's a key. I, I didn't say this yet. We don't sow into our relationship with God um, to earn God's love or to earn our salvation. Our salvation is a free gift of grace based on the blood of Jesus shed on the cross. He paid the price for all my sins. He did all the work. It is finished. And you don't add to that finished work. Okay. You receive that finished work. Okay, that's how salvation comes into you, just through Jesus Christ and him alone, Christ crucified. But also, we are to build on that relationship and, and building on that relationship that is based on, um, you know, am I going to sow into that or not? Okay, you're saved by grace, but you get close to God. It's You get close to God by grace as well, but um, there is a principle that, you, you know, you do have to put some energy into this relationship if you really want to know God in a deep way, right? It, it, it takes your intentionality, right? You have to, you have to want it. You have to desire it. Um, that's why Jesus said, seek and you will find. You have to seek him if you want to know him. Um, so sowing into your relationship with God, that's through the word, that's through prayer, that's through fellowship, that's through going to church, right? These things being a part of the body. 
And then you have to sow into also sowing into the kingdom of God. Now, what does that mean? Sowing into the kingdom of God is service, right? That's evangelism. That's sowing into using my spiritual gift, serving, um, helping people, right? Um, sharing my faith, um, praying for others and, and doing different things that build up the kingdom of God. That's sowing to the spirit. Um, you know, there's so many different ways to sow to the spirit. There's, I could give you a list. Maybe I'll even comment different ways you can sow to the spirit, right? You can worship, you know, spending time in worship is sowing into the spirit. Um, spending time with God, spending time with others, spending time, um, serving the local church. Um, all these things are sowing into the spirit. Let me simplify it. Sowing into the spirit is investing in your relationship with God and the service of God. Those two things, your own personal connection and your service and obedience to God. That's how you serve. That's how you sow to the spirit. And so the Bible encourages us to sow into the spirit. Okay, to live for things that are eternal instead of things that are temporary because those temporary things don't last. And man, I want to tell you guys that sometimes it's challenging as a Christian. Sometimes it's challenging to sow into the spirit because we don't always see the fruit of that. But by faith, I believe that not only is it worth it, not only does Jesus command it, to sow to the spirit, but I also believe by faith that God's word is true and that I will reap if I do not give up. So many people are tempted to give up, right? We're discouraged. And the reason we get discouraged is sometimes because we're not motivated by the love of Christ. We're motivated by something else. But you know what? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 that the love of Christ compels us. So if I know the love of God for me, that is an overflowing cup that will continue to compel me to sow into the spirit. That will sow into the spirit. So, man, just remember how much God loves you. Just, just abide in his love. Rest in his love. Um, you know, but I really just want to encourage you guys and ask you and challenge you in love, not in rebuke, but in love. Man, what are you sowing your life into? You only have one life. Guys, you only have one life. Then one day you're going to die and you're going to stand before God or the rapture is going to come and you're going to stand before God and God is going to forgive you if you are a believer in Jesus. But also God is going to reward you and God is going to hold you accountable for how you lived and stewarded your life. And I just want you to stand before God and I want you to say, man, I lived my life sowing into the spirit because when you stand before God and you spent your whole life sowing into the spirit, not out of a place of I have to, but I get to because of love, man, that's going to be an exciting day for you because you're going to say, Lord, I've given my life to you. I'm ready to be with you. I've built my relationship with you. I know you. And, and man, God's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. But if you spent your life as a Christian, as believer in Jesus, you can still be a believer in Jesus, but still so to the flesh. And that's the truth. You can still be a fleshly Christian. That's why 1 Corinthians 3 talks about a carnal Christian. And, you know, God's going to let you into the kingdom because of his blood. But there's, you're not going to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant, if you weren't a good and faithful servant. He's not just saying that to anybody. He's saying that to people who multiplied their talents. He's saying that to people that sowed into the spirit. He's saying that to people that were good and faithful servants. So man, I want to hear those words. I want you to hear these, those words. And I want you to just be encouraged to sow into the kingdom because you will reap a harvest. It's the best way to invest your life. Jim Elliott said, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Guys, you cannot lose the things you've done for Christ, if they were done from the motivation of love. In 1 Corinthians 13, always remember this, and I'm going to close with this. 1 Corinthians 13 says, if you do all of these good things, if you give away all your goods to the poor, if you 
give your body to be burned, if you have all these prophetic powers and understand mysteries, but you don't have love, it's worth nothing. So the key here is love, right? It, 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 it's not about just doing kingdom things. It's about focusing on loving God and loving your neighbor. Because that is the fruit of the Spirit. That is the real key. Love God and love your neighbor. That's really the way to sow into the Spirit. So I just want to encourage you with this message. This is something God was putting on my heart tonight. And I hope this blesses you. Thanks.